How's it going everyone? It's Sam. We are going to look at Dan Bilzerian and Ignite International Brands and talk about the fraud and the scam that it has been and specifically talking about how to avoid these situations in the future if you are an investor because a lot of people have done videos on the scam that is Dan Bilzerian but I want to look at it from more of a stock analysis approach so I'm going to go through some of the past some of the history of Dan Bilzerian and compare it to one of the great investors that's a few generations older and kind of compare how their lifestyles are different and then talk about what kind of red flags you can notice if you're looking at buying into a company and what you should look at in senior management. So if you guys like this, please leave a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Also, if you want some free stocks, there are links down there below to Webull. You can get three free stocks if you deposit $100 at the time of this recording. So Dan Bilzerian is the quote unquote king of Instagram. He is one of the most eccentric uh, personalities on Instagram. There are pictures of him with weaponry uh, with with women everywhere he's one of those people that younger people i think want to model their lifestyle after because it's so independent it's so out there it's so outrageous that it's kind of just an interesting thing to watch and if you're someone that likes excitement it's very exciting so that is kind of how we got well known he's a professional poker player or he was a professional poker player but then he took his company, did a reverse merger with Ignite International Brands, and took his company public. So it was on the on the Canadian penny stock market. And you can see here that it is about 36 cents a share right now. If we look over their maximum lifespan or their maximum timeline, they started in January 24, 2019. And since then, the company has gone down about 86%. Now, there have been a lot of allegations. There has been a lot of intrigue into the company recently and into Dan himself. Every time that I go on YouTube, it seems like I have a different Dan Bolzerian video coming up. You can see here that a lot of the videos on him have just been going insane. I think a lot of people are interested in what's happening because, first of all, it's a public company. Second of all, Dan has over 30 million Instagram subscribers or followers, so he is well known and a lot of people are curious what's happening. Now, the main allegations are that he has essentially taken company money and used it for personal gain or for his own personal expenses. According to this lawsuit, accountants flagged about $843,000 in company expenses that appear to be personal in nature. Apparently, according to some ex-employees, he's basically slapping on the company logo to yachts, to cars, to everything that he has just to make it a company expense. And he is essentially spending millions of dollars each year, including $50,000 for a bed frame, $75,000 for a paintball field, and $88,000 vault. And it's just crazy the kinds of expenses that he has. Now, just looking at the companies, before we get into Dan versus this other investor, let's take a look at what the company has done. So essentially, they've been raising debt and they've also been issuing shares to drum up cash because they have been pretty cash poor and are burning through cash at a very quick rate. So if we look, their total revenues over the last couple quarters, 1.6 million, 2.6 million, 2 million, 1.2 million, 2.3 million. They have a couple different lines of products. Uh, a lot of them are based in things that I am not sure I can talk about on YouTube just because I don't know if it'll be demonetized. But you can see that their operating income is negative tens of millions of dollars. And this is again quarterly, right? So they have burned through a lot of money this year and their net income is negative 10 million, negative 25 million, negative six, and negative 5.5. So overall, they're down about 45 million on the year. Now their revenue hasn't been really increasing that much either. You can see that it's been pretty stagnant. Of course, there has been the pandemic and everything, but this has been the case for a little while. You can see that they are losing a decent amount of money too, losing about 14 cents per share, two cents per share, two cents per share, nine cents per share. So they are losing a lot of money. And what I want to do is compare this to Berkshire Hathaway. 
So I'm not going to go as deep into all the fraud and everything, but I want to compare them and uh, compare them to Berkshire Hathaway and compare Dan to Warren Buffett and show you the red flags that I see. So Berkshire Hathaway, just looking at their financial statements, you can see their revenue, total revenue, 64 billion, 65 billion, 65 billion, 61, 56. You can see down here that they are positive about 29 billion, 16 billion, 26 billion. Of course, they had that one down quarter, but their revenues are pretty high. Their net income is pretty high. They are earning a lot per share for their investors. And they have been one of the most consistent companies out there, not in terms of stock price, but in terms of what they provide and the value that they bring their investors. So let's take a look at Dan Bilzerian versus Warren Buffett. So first of all, housing. Dan Bilzerian is said to have rented out a $200,000 a month house and he is apparently putting this towards the company. He is saying that it's an expense. Warren Buffett has had one of the same houses for, was that, 55 years or so, 65 years. It was from the 50s. He paid $31,000 from it. Recently, more, he's bought about a $4 million home in California. But he is a billionaire that's living like a millionaire. And Dan is a millionaire living like a billionaire. So there is a little bit of a difference there. Now their lifestyle. Dan is known, and I'm not going to say this is wrong, but he's known for this crazy extreme lifestyle where he's shooting guns, where he's hanging out with women, where he is taking yachts wherever he wants, and that is great for him. But Warren Buffett is known to go to McDonald's every day and buy breakfast for a couple dollars. He is known to be really a laid back guy that isn't too extreme, isn't spending a ton of money. There's a general difference in lifestyle between the two. And I understand from Dan's perspective that that is his brand. That's what he's trying to do. But there is a little bit of concern once you start seeing people that are in very important roles doing that kind of stuff. I mean, you can look at Nicola, right? Their CEO was buying a $30 million ranch or something like that on new money from the company, money they just made from the company going public and uh, new money from them actually doing well. So that is something to just like send off a little flag in your head. Okay, what kind of lifestyle are they living? And that kind of transitions into their expenses. So Warren Buffett doesn't spend a lot of money. Now he can, he could spend a ton of money. He's worth 80 or $90 billion, but he is not trying to live this extreme lifestyle. He's not trying to cash out or anything like that. While Dan is living this insane lifestyle, spending millions of dollars, maybe a million dollars every month. And this is something where if you're looking at a company and investing in it, I would be a little bit cautious if I start to see the CEO spending a lot more money or spending just a lot of money in general, and they are diluting shares, they are issuing more debt. If the company CEO and the people in the company are spending all this money and they believe in the company, why aren't they investing more money into the company or something like that? Why are they spending so much money on this frivolous lifestyle? So, of course, again, I realize that that's part of his brand, but that would send off another flag in my head. Now, let's talk about the issues with the law. So, Warren Buffett is pretty scot-free, but if we look at Dan, he has been sued for some of the craziest stuff. He was banned from a Miami nightclub after kicking a model in the head after, during a brawl. He had a legal matter with a actress who he threw off the top of a house during a photo shoot. He was arrested at Los Angeles airport on bomb making charges. And there was this time too recently in July where the former Ignite president sued Bilzerian over a wrongful termination and pointed out that there's misappropriation of company funds. All this stuff would stop me from wanting to invest in a company. If I see someone that is the brand or the face of a company and he's done all this stupid, stupid stuff, and you could say, okay, maybe some of this isn't his fault. I always think that they're innocent until proven guilty. But if you keep on getting sued for different stuff like this, there's got to be some truth to it, I think. So I would be cautious. Now, looking at this compared to Warren Buffett, <laughs> Warren Buffett is 
very different. First of all, you can see Warren Buffett is a really smart guy. He went to University of Nebraska. He went on to graduate from Columbia. He yeah, he's been studying Benjamin Graham and value investing. He went to New York Institute of Finance. There is a lot of stuff going for Berkshire Hathaway and for Warren Buffett compared to Dan Bolzerian, who is getting arrested. Warren Buffett in his youth was going and getting massive amounts of degrees and learning a lot. So it's just kind of crazy to compare the two. So those are just some things that pop into my head when I'm looking at the two companies. Now, how to avoid the, this kind of stock and how to avoid the trap of these kinds of scammers? Well, first, do your research, right? So if you see some kind of company CEO spending a lot of money right after the company goes public, if you see them living an extravagant lifestyle and not doing smart things, like if they've, if in the past they've been arrested for all these stupid different things, I would be cautious of the company. Second of all, if you want to be extra cautious, maybe don't invest in penny stocks. I invest in one or two penny stocks myself, but I invest a small amount in their companies that I've done a good amount of research for. But if you want to just stay away from some of these more extreme stocks, you could stay away from penny stocks. They're a little bit more risky. There's less light shed on them and they can be a little bit higher risk. So maybe stay away from penny stocks just in general and don't invest emotionally. So if you like Dan Bilzerian and you like his lifestyle, that's awesome. Go buy his products. Maybe don't buy his stock. Pay attention. Do your research. Maybe look out and see, okay, are they issuing shares? Are they increasing company expenses? Do as much research as you can. And don't invest just because you like someone's lifestyle that's in the company. Invest because you like the company itself and the, the products that they sell and the potential market that they can get into and just the company CEO and general and the rest of the management team. You have to be cautious because just because you like the lifestyle doesn't mean that translates into a good company to buy. So I want to compare Dan versus Warren Buffett. Of course, they are very different. They are totally different ends of the spectrum, but I think it's interesting to take a look at and try to avoid these kinds of temptations and these kinds of stocks to invest in. Just because you like a company and you like their CEO and what they're doing doesn't mean that you should invest in them. Now, let me know your thoughts below. Let me know what you think about the scam. Of course, I didn't cover it as in depth as some other people, but I just wanted to send up some signals to you and to hopefully send you some red flags or make you think of some red flags next time you see something like this. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for hitting the like button. Thank you for checking out Weeble, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.